Well, he was very clear on his perspective. He says, you know, we have one thing in common. We were on the outside looking in. And even though tribes have had a long uh, treaty relationship with the United States, and actually a treaty relationship with foreign powers before there was the United States, we've always in the l last uh, 150 years felt like we were on the outside looking in. And so for him to establish a system of communication was very important. The thing that we really wanted to see, and he did, uh, did so quickly, was pronounce a policy, his Indian policy. Uh, then with an executive order he signed that morning when he appeared in front of the assembly, he uh, uh, codified other campaign promises. One is to to enhance the government-to-government -government relationship, to a nation-to-nation -nation relationship, to acknowledge that tribes were truly governments that uh, preceded the United States, and that there were obligations and promises made by the United States to tribes and treaties and other documents that have gone unfulfilled. The other one to make sure that that happens is a consultation policy. Before the United States does something to us, at least they'll give us some heads up. You know, in the last uh, a uh, few years, it's been, it seems like an agency or Congress will do something, then after the fact will say, well, guess what uh, we've done to you. And so that consultation policy will allow us to develop a relationship, a meaningful relationship. Well, those are good policies. President Clinton uh, had an executive order similar. Uh, George Bush did. But they were never fully executed. So what was unique about this meeting was not only did he pronounce those policies, emphasize them, he created a mechanism to ensure that they would be carried out. And he did that by requiring each of his agencies to develop a plan to execute his policy within 90 days and then publish periodically the success of that plan. And so you can say things, and then you can say things and mean them. And you can say things and mean them and then make sure they get done. And so in this instance, there was the mechanism to do so. And the evidence that he was heard by his cabinets, uh, heads, was that they were in attendance. During the day, uh, probably uh, six or eight of the secretaries of various uh, uh, agencies were there. Uh, they had listening sessions that day and days in, uh, before that. So I think they got the message, and I think the Indian country realized that they got the message, and that's what made the day special. Well, obviously, health care was an issue that was discussed there. Can you talk about some of the things that were discussed as far as um, some of the issues the Indian country is facing with health care and how it relates to uh, Obama's administration, um, the plans for health care reform? Well, health care is a unique situation because the uh, the big bill really affects us very little. Uh, the biggest thing that, uh, that there's at play is just underfunding. Uh, we run nine uh, health facilities and a hospital. Uh, we're funded about one-third of what a federal employee is. Uh, we're funded actually less than a federal uh, inmate. And so what that means is that we ration health care. In-depth propositions were not discussed. Issues were identified. Uh, some tribes had unique circumstances or examples. But in terms of health care, um, if you allowed tribes to control uh, their health care initiatives, we're very effective at it. Uh, and we can actually use those federal funds to a greater degree of effectiveness and efficiency than even the federal government can do.